Hello, in this presentation, we will generate, analyze, and export to Excel a sales by item report within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are with the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're looking at some of those other reports other than the financial statement reports of the balance sheet and income statement that could be useful when analyzing data and seeing how QuickBooks can organize this same data in many different formats that can be useful for decision makers. This time we'll look at the sales data once again, but rather than sorting it by customer as we saw in the past, we're going to sort that same data by item or product or service. So we're going to go to the reports on the left side and we are going to type in the report sales by. Now, if you were to see this in the desktop version, it, it typically says sales by item. And here we're going to say sales by product or service detail. Uh, we're going to have the summary sales by product or service summary. Now, that's just going to be a terminology difference. Uh, an item is what QuickBooks uses as one of the formats. One of the item formats is service items and inventory items. One of the first things we'll do when we set up a new company uh, is set up those items because those are the things that will be used to create the invoices and the sales receipts. And therefore, the sales and the sales receipts and the uh, invoices are used to generate revenue, to generate sales in order to make the, and that's what we're using to make this report, the sales report. But there's also some other things that uh, QuickBooks calls items as well, other than just inventory items. So QuickBooks Online, I think is actually a little bit more specific rather than calling it a uh, just items, we're gonna call it exactly what it is. It's a product service summary. So in essence, then that means that if someone says that we're looking for QuickBooks, and we want a sales uh, by item, then they're really talking about the inventory items, what we do. We either sell inventory or we uh, have services, and those are driven by items. Those are items that we enter into QuickBooks, which will be more apparent as we go through and input those items. And uh, in the online version, then rather than calling it items, we're gonna have it sales by exactly what it is, those sales broken out by the products that we sold, in our case, guitars, the inventory, or the services. In our case, we had guitar lessons and maintenance on guitars, tune-ups and whatnot. So we're gonna select this report, and then we're gonna change the date range, that date range of 01012122022821, that of January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, and run that report. So if we scroll back up top, remember that we haven't yet entered this data into this problem set. This is the data that we will be entering for these two months. As we go through this, uh, we can go through and learn how to manipulate these reports and go back and forth to these reports to see how they will be formatted. So uh, if we scroll back down, then we're going to have our, our sales information and it will be broken out by what we sell. So in this case, both we, we're going to sell both inventory in terms of guitars and we'll have service items, meaning we don't sell physical things. We have some type of service like guitar lessons. So here in this case, we have guitar lessons where we have the quantity, the amount, uh, the percentage of sales and the average price. And uh, so we can we can see that. And then we have the uh, types of guitars, in this case, an ELP type of guitar. That's an abbreviation for the guitar. We've got three that we sold. Um, amount is 1,500. Uh, the, the percentage of sales, total sales, there's a percentage of total sales, 7.99%. Uh, the average price is 500. Now the average price, you know, if, if we charged, of course, a different price for these ELP guitars, then the average price would change and we'd, we would take the average of whatever we sold the guitar for. Uh, in our two month time period, we sold them all for $500. Therefore, the average is $500. Of course, when we think about the sales of guitars, they're also including the gross, the cost of goods sold, uh, how much we paid for the guitars. So here's the amount of revenue. Here's the cost of goods sold. That's going to give us the gross margin of 300 or a markup of 20, a gross margin percent, in other words, of 20%. 
So this is going to be a sales by product or service. And it actually gives us a lot more detail than, than just the sales number. When we looked at the customer sales, all we had, of course, were the list of customers. So let's break down what happened in, in terms of these two types of ways we can see this. This number down here uh, represents the total sales. So if we were to run an income statement for the month of January and February 2021 for this data set, we should see sales revenue uh, of eighteen thousand seven seventy five forty. That's what we made. That's the top line of the income statement. Income minus expenses is net income. This is the income. This is the revenue. We broke it out last time in terms of customers. Who uh, did we sell these guitars to? Now we're breaking it down by what we did in order to earn that revenue. What we did is either we sold guitars or we had some kind of service revenue such as guitar lessons. And it actually gives us a lot more report, a lot more than just the um, breakout by service item. It gives us also the cost of goods sold. So this would be the total cost of goods sold we should find on uh, the income statement as well. And then it gives us our gross margin. So we have a, a lot of you know good detail when we're looking at the sales by item summary. And just remember that if if you're looking at the desktop version, it's probably just going to be sales by item and we're going to name it here in the online version sales by product uh, slash service summary probably a more ap accurate name this one uh, but a little bit longer <laughs> uh, of a name as well so we're going to scroll up top what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this report as has been our custom of doing the date and the time and the accrual basis uh, items down there in order to do that we'll scroll up top we will customize the reports and we will go to the header and footer and see that drop down scrolling down to the footer we're going to unselect or uncheck the date prepared the time prepared and the report basis then we're going to go down and run that report once again check that it has done what we believe it should do removing the footer looks good we're going to scroll back up top then and we will export this report to excel so we'll select the export item, export to Excel. We are in uh, Chrome here, so it should be popping up on the left side. If it's not popping up on the left side, then you want to check your, your settings. Or if you're in a different browser, it, it might have obviously some other uh, downloading function, but uh, it should download in some way. So we're going to close this up. I'm going to enable the editing. And here is our report. Looks like it's all fitting on one page, so that is good. It uh, and so it's all it's all formatted okay. The header is is going okay. Now it's getting a little bit long here in terms of it's going from A to H. So if we want to see if it's fitting on one page, we could then go down here to the page layout, and that'll show us kind of the page break. And normally, if we go to the page layout and then back to the normal view, back to this little grid icon then it'll give us this little dotted line saying that's where the page breakout is if these little green icons are, are bugging you this this is basically kind of like a security setting that would be there if you were to um, protect this worksheet um, so if you, if you right click on any cell and you were to uh, format the cell and mess with the protection settings here uh, it, it's it's currently locked. The cell is at locked. These these uh, little green icons have to do with that. You could go to each of these icons and uh, say ignore, and it would turn off the green. There's also a setting that you can use to to turn that off as well. But uh, it shouldn't be in the the printing section in any case. If you go to File tab and you were to print this, it's not going to show those little green icons. Okay, so now we're going to save this. So we're going to, I went back here, so I probably did that a little quickly, but we're back in the Home tab. We're going to go to the File tab. We're going to save this. So we're going to go to the File tab. And we're going to scroll down to Save As. We're going to browse to put it to where we want to save it as. We will open up the Excel Docs 4. That's where we're going to put it. We're going to rename this. So I'm just going to change the name. I'm going to delete the name we have here. Just calling it a Sales by item summary and save that report and that's going to be the sales by item summary 
For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.